The Orange County Forum is a nonprofit organization. Your contributions are tax deductible. It's my pleasure to introduce candidate for uh, governor of the state of California, Antonio Villaraigosa. Thank you, Henry, for that introduction. I wrote every word myself. <laughs> you just didn't read it all. <laughs> no, thank you, and thank you for the invitation. Uh, I've been wanting uh, to come and didn't have a connection, and the fact that you helped uh, to bring this day to fruition uh, is deeply appreciated. Thank you, and uh, I'd be remiss. He mentioned other members of the legislature. Uh, one uh, former speaker, Kurt Pringle, who I worked with uh, when I was in the legislatures here. His daughter Katie's here, and uh, we go way back. I remember when Katie was you know, like this, and so was Antonio and Natalia, and, and so it's great to be with, here with you. And uh, Tom, uh, it's great to be here with you as well, because uh, I'll tell you something. I watched uh, Tom... Uh, uh, and both uh, folks for me were uh, heroes uh, in the sense that uh, I learned a lot from both of them. And I just want to acknowledge both of you. Um, let me just, I'm going to walk around. I, I know that I'm on TV, I guess, but uh, I'm going to walk around a bit and talk a little bit. You heard a bio, but let me share a little bit of my story. My grandpa got here from Leon, Guanajuato, Mexico, 100 years ago, uh, 1903. And came with the dream, a shirt on his back, worked in the fields, built a small business into a thriving middle-class life. Uh, with no education in the nine, late 1920s, uh, Grandpa had my mother in, uh, and my aunt in a, the top Catholic boarding school, lost all his money uh, in the Depression, uh, lost his wife, uh, as so many people did back then, you know, struggling to make ends meet. Uh, I tell people I'm here on the shoulders of the greatest generation. Uh, California gave me, and it's given so many of us, uh, the, the dream uh, that we call the American dream, but we distinctly know it here as the California dream. And I, when I talk to people about that dream, I say, you know, uh, you've never heard of the Texas dream as much as they talk about Texas. You've never heard of the Kansas dream or the New York dream or the Minnesota dream. There's only one place that has its own dream, and that's California. And that's because the people who come from all over the world, when they land somewhere in the United States, they come here uh, to reinvent themselves and to live that dream uh, in a way that uh, uh, has made... California special. Uh, California, as you all know, sixth largest economy in the world, and the folks in Sacramento love to remind us of that. And uh, we've grown faster in 2014-15 uh, than the national economy. We grew more jobs than Texas and Florida combined. What they don't say is that we have one of the highest uh, poverty rates in the United States of America. Uh, we have, uh, you know, a few million people on Medi-Cal. Uh, people who, the places where jobs are growing, this is one of them, but places like the Central Valley and the Inland Empire, they're growing jobs. They're just not jobs that can maintain uh, a middle-class quality of life. And I think that this state needs to take a deep look at itself and ask the question, what do we do to restore the luster uh, to that gold? What do we do to make this state uh, a better state? And uh, I think that one of the things we've got to do is we've got to grow the economy. This last election, and you know, some people were for uh, Donald Trump and some were for Hillary Clinton. But what's absolutely clear about that election is that not enough of us are focused on the economy, on growing the economy, on addressing the fact that in this state particularly, it's really difficult for small business uh, to grow their business. We have some of the toughest, uh, you know, 
some of the toughest regulatory framework in, in anywhere in the United States. The cost of doing business is higher here than almost anywhere. But that's not the only challenge. The challenge of the new economy is, the, is an economy predicated on intellectual capital is, is the challenge of educating our kids. About 80% of them are going, uh, graduated from high school in the state. About 13% of the 62% of kids who, of color, about 13% of them are going to a four-year college. This state will not make it if we're not doing more to educate and train those kids. We'll be a million down in the number of college graduates we need by 2025. A million down in the number of people with specialized skills uh, by 2025. What are we doing uh, to train and educate those kids for the jobs of the 21st century? I think that's the challenge before us. You look at our roads and our highways, and as I walked in, the Orange County Register was quick uh, to ingratiate himself and say he was there in 2005 when I uh, got inaugurated. And the first question was, uh, am I for uh, the, the recent gas tax? And I said, I am. But I think it's too simple to say that. The fact is, we're going to have to think out of the box. We can't keep on raising taxes to address our infrastructure challenge. And so in that vein, I want to talk a little bit uh, about the things I've done uh, with respect to education, with respect to infrastructure, and, and with respect to the, the business environment. With respect to education, when I was mayor, we had a 44% graduation rate. I said to the, to the city that I love that my city wasn't going to make it. LA was not going to make it with a 44% graduation rate. I took on powerful interest in uh, my city. I challenged uh, the notion that, that we could be okay with a 44% graduation rate. By the time I left, that graduation rate had grown to 72%. But more importantly, we had doubled the number of successful schools in Los Angeles. We had quintupled the number of charters at 800 and above when we were measuring schools. Uh, tripled the number of charters overall. We challenged the notion uh, that the school district couldn't improve. Uh, we built infrastructure, and I mentioned that infrastructure was important. You know, we didn't just raise taxes, as I said to the reporter a few minutes ago. You know, we did a half-penny sales tax. We generated $40 billion over a 30-year period of time, but we figured out we need a lot more than that. So we went to the feds, and we said, you ought to reward cities and counties with low-cost loans and bonds so that we can uh, expand on what we're doing. You ought to give us regulatory relief because before... Uh, before um, America Fast Forward, which I put forth across the country, you know, we did our environmental review, and then the feds did theirs. I said, why do the feds? Uh, in the end, we did them concurrently and saved instead of, you know, consecutively and saved time and money. Uh, we've got to think out of the box that way if we're going to build the infrastructure. The fact is, uh, Seek was broken. Uh, we all know it. Uh, everybody sues, uh, slows down a project, and raises the cost of that project environment. The fact is, too many cities uh, don't want uh, to build uh, the market rate, the, the workforce housing that we need. Uh, they don't want to build the affordable housing that this state needs. And we've got to incentivize them to, to do that. We've got to incentivize them to look at things like density bonuses and parking variances and height variances, particularly along in places like Santa Ana and Anaheim, in the inner core of the cities, along transportation corridors. So I want to look at a, a trust fund that incentivizes cities to get off their tough and do what needs to, to get done so that we can build that housing. We're building a little less than half of what we need right now, as you know, and that's not good enough. Because affordable housing, I mean, the, the, the affordability in housing is a crisis, not just in Orange County, it's in the Bay Area, it's in Los Angeles, it's in mostly the most affluent parts of the, of the state, but also in, even the, in an empire as well. So uh, putting the housing trust fund together 
that focuses on uh, incentivizing cities and counties who are putting up their own money, who are addressing regulatory relief, and uh, the density bonuses, the other uh, things that will expedite the building of housing. Yes. Mayor, your installation of metal security primary county in Los Angeles. What were some of the lessons learned from that experience, and do you think we need a redevelopment 2.0? Yes, we do need a redevelopment 2.0. Uh, Kurt and I fought for that, and you know, the, in the middle of a recession, the state took away the tools that you needed for economic development and um, uh, you know, housing, and uh, I do think we need it. Uh, what were some of the things we did? I, I want to take you back for a second because this is Orange County and. It's the same metropolitan area. Almost everybody said we were going bankrupt uh, when I was mayor. Uh, the economy hit us like a ton of bricks, the worst economy since the 1930s. We were looking at thousands of layoffs, uh, and uh, I laid off more people uh, than anybody uh, since the 1930s uh, in Los Angeles. I put uh, current employees on uh, 40 days of furloughs for three years. We did pension reform, uh, some of the most far-reaching pension reform in the state. We had current employees who were paying 6%, uh, now paying 11%. Uh, we capped um, retiree health uh, for new firefighters and police officers. Uh, the, the 6 to 11 was for the 37,000 uh, civilian employees. We made it free to open up a business in LA. And when I was criticized for that, and they said, well, you're in the middle of a recession, why would you make it free? And I said, well, the answer is, they're not coming here anyway. Uh, and we doubled the number of small businesses in LA. Yeah, we doubled the number of small businesses in Los Angeles from 2010 to 2013 when I left. Uh, we made it, we, it used to be that you had to go to 12 different departments in the city of Los Angeles to develop. When the business community, uh, raised that issue, um, I said, well, let's try something. So I brought representative from those 12 de departments into one unit. And uh, I said to them, uh, I'm told that six of you at any given time will have a different position from the other, and they have to hire expediters to figure it out. So what we're going to do here is you're going to be the expediter. You're going to figure it out. Uh, that We took that from 12 departments to one to develop in Los Angeles, getting creep back, so now it's two. Uh, but uh, we did a number of things to kind of uh, address uh, a broken economy, as you may have seen. Um, put four and a half billion dollars in the airport, the first you know, investment in the airport since the Olympics in 1984. Um, we did a billion and a half at the, uh, the port, we built more schools, and I chaired every one of those bonds, more schools than any city in the United States of America. And I don't have to tell you, three light rail lines and one busway. So we were focused on the economy. And the next governor has got to focus on the economy. Uh, we got to build infrastructure. Uh, we got to educate and train our kids. I'm for it. Been for it since 1998. Um, I think if you just, and I know it's, you know, half the people in the state are for it and half the people aren't. In fact, I think this county is mostly not for it. But, um, and same with a number of other counties in the state. But let me tell you what, I, I tell people, if you're just looking at high-speed rail uh, based on fare box recovery, what you put, how much it costs to build, uh, you know, what you get from the fare box, you, you're really not thinking uh, of the possibilities. When I did Measure R and I said, dream with me, I'll build the subway to the sea. Uh, you know, everybody laughed. And almost from the beginning, they said, it's never going to happen. It's too expensive. When we put it on the ballot, you know, it's the recession. It takes two thirds vote. You know, it, it, it's never going to happen. Well, it did happen. And what it did was it leveraged economic development downtown along Wilshire Boulevard, uh, you know, in Hollywood. And that's what high-speed rail is going to do. It's going to connect the two engines uh, of uh, the California economy, Southern California uh, and, you know, uh, the Bay Area. And it's going to connect it to a place where housing is, is affordable. 
uh, the Central Valley. Uh, and uh, it's going to be a real engine for economic growth in our state. And so I am for it. I, I do think we need to value engineer it. Uh, by the way, if we're going to build infrastructure, I said we've got to incentivize cities and counties to put up their own money. We've got to address a broken regulatory framework. And we've got to look at public-private partnerships. You know, look, this is the only country in the world that doesn't, that the private sector doesn't participate uh, or, you know, with the government in building airports and build, you, you have uh, somebody I met uh, does the Orange County toll. That was you. I thought it was you. That's why I looked at you. Um, hey, it works. Not perfect, but it works. And we, we, we've got to engage in public private partnerships as well. So we're going to have to value engineer it as much as we can, but it, it's going to be a boon. Uh, to the Central Valley, it's going to connect housing with uh, two, you know, economic engines and, and spread out, uh, you know, good high paying jobs throughout the state, and not just on the coast. You know, I think the way we have to look at the water issue is, you know, uh, more comprehensively. And let me say a couple of things uh, about water. You know, um, Kurt and I, uh, in 1998, agreed to a water bond. And uh, in that water bond, we called for uh, two dams. Um, and uh, since then, and w I did it kicking and screaming. Kurt was for it. I, I was kicking and screaming because I think most of us understand that underground aquifers is the best way uh, to store water. But uh, there was a deal. We didn't keep it. And that's been part of the problem in this it's state. Not us that broke the deal. Yeah, not us that broke the deal. Thank you very much. <laughs> not us that broke the deal. Uh, it, it, that's been part of the problem. The, the reason why water, the water issue is such a, at a crisis level is because, uh, you know, there's no trust. Uh, the ag doesn't trust, uh, you know, uh, the coast. Uh, the rural areas don't trust the urban areas. Uh, I tell people, I was on a show called The Water Wars. And, uh, I'm sorry, uh, it was MSNBC special, and it was called The Water Wars. And they asked me to come on. I said, why do you call it The Water Wars you know, on TV? And I said, why do you call it The Water Wars, Chris? And he says, I call it The Water Wars because guys like you, you went to two days watering a week eight years ago. You got killed for it. You saw this coming. You, you reduced your water consumption by 23%, number one American city, over a million, he said, and ag is using 80% uh, of the water, have 20% of the population. Cities have 80% of the population using 20% of the water. And I said, well, you know, I'm not really good at math, but who's eating those fruits and vegetables? <laughs> and he said, well, he looks at me and he said, I said, well, the answer is we are. So we're eating and drinking 100% of the water. So I tell people, uh, before we start, uh, you know, pointing fingers at one another, which we've been doing more than not, uh, we got to develop some trust and we got to look at ourselves. LA doubled its recycling from one and a half to three percent. I say this all the time, not just in front of you. Good. I say it in Bakersfield, I say it in Fresno, I say it in San Bernardino. Orange County is doing 35 percent, 30 something percent, uh, you know. Israel does 80%. We all got to recycle more. We got to conserve more. Uh, we got to recharge our and clean up our underground aquifers. Uh, we got to say all of the above, everybody. You know, that if you hear one side and they'll say, you know, we should never do desal. Now, most of us know desal is not the answer. There's no one answer. But, and their, their, their criticism of desal is that the power footprint is too big, and it is and that it takes too long to build, and it does. But why can't we uh, use the technology we have in this state to drive down that power footprint? Uh, why can't we ad admit that the reason why uh, it takes so long is because you can sue all the way, all the way down. CEQA ha has given you know, it's a license to lawsuits, and I'm, I'm supportive of CEQA, uh, but I'm, I'm just saying we've got to reform it. Uh, we've got to reduce the time that it takes to build it. So um, with respect to the water issue, uh, 
people have talked about the two, two tunnels. I've said we're not there yet. You know, the northern, the, the Delta farmers uh, feel, and the north feels like the south is going to take uh, their water away. That's why I started with the word trust. We got to build trust. Uh, if we want a grand bargain on water, we got to acknowledge that ag is important because uh, they feed us uh, and they feed the world. Uh, we got to acknowledge that water is precious, so we all have to conserve it. Uh, and we have to use technology and water markets, uh, what, you know, a number of things that include all of the above. So um, I want to protect Southern California, but I think the only way uh, to protect Southern California is to work with Northern California uh, on a grand bargain. Workforce development. Uh, you just said it. You don't need to be, you don't need to have a BS in engineering uh, to be a coder. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't need a BS in biology uh, to work in the health sciences. We need to identify all of those, the, where the skills gap is, where the industries uh, that have a skills gap and uh, we need to focus like a laser beam uh, as a state uh, on those jobs. That's what we did in the city of LA. We, we realized uh, really early on within a few months that we were training people for all these minimum wage jobs and there were all these jobs that were open with just a little more training, we could fill them. And that's what the state's gonna have to do. We're gonna have to put a dashboard. These are the industries that, cr that currently um, uh, you know, have a skills gap. What do we do to fill them? Support the community colleges. I think we, we need to bring career technical education back uh, to our high schools. Uh, we need to work more closely with community colleges to do that. Uh, my head of workforce development is now the president of LA uh, Trade Tech, and uh, he's someone that's been a, a real expert in that area, and I think we're going to have to uh, do a, a much better job than we've done in the past. Because a million down in college graduates, but also in people with specialized degrees. We set high standards. Uh, I, I got tired of hearing uh, excuses for failure uh, and tired of hearing people tell me uh, that, these, that the reason why we had a 44% graduation rate was because we had so many immigrants, so many English language learners, so many foster kids, so many un, uh, homeless kids, uh, and we didn't accept uh, that. And so one was setting higher standards. Uh, two, uh, we, we focused on instruction. And you know, if, if you go into schools, uh, there are a lot of uh, educational leaders, principals, uh, who are really good at making sure the ed code is being enforced, this big, thick book like that. And, you know, the, the, the building's locked down, uh, the trash is picked up. And then if you ask them, when's the last time you've been in a classroom? Uh, the answer is, well, I haven't been in the classroom very often. So we, we, we said we've got to focus on instructional leaders who are uh, going to help, uh, you know, our teachers. Focused on training a lot more training of our teachers. Uh, we pushed uh, more rigorous evaluation of our teachers. And importantly, we got our parents involved. You know, I didn't mention my background, and I usually do, but and maybe you don't all know it. I grew up in a home of domestic violence and alcoholism. A single mom who raised her kids, uh, rode the bus most of her life, uh, but she'd walk to the projects to our school. Uh, to check in. She participated. So uh, you couldn't, in a public school, force parents to participate. But we created a parent college, teaching parents their rights, their roles, and their responsibilities. 9,000 people have gone through that. We did that in my partnership schools, and they're doing it throughout the, um, the school district. We said to them, if a grade is good enough for a third grader, why not for a school? So we graded our schools. So we did a number of things like that, brought technology into the classroom, uh, but mostly set higher standards, pushed uh, the educational community to improve. We brought in, a, you know, uh, as I said, we tripled the number of charters. We 
quintuple the number of successful charters. Do you know that in Los Angeles, the best middle school in Los Angeles is not in Brentwood. It's not in Encino. It's not in the Palisades. It's in Boyle Heights. It's a KIPP school. Poor kids, immigrant kids, um, and they're excelling. They're doing really well. So, um, you know, as governor, uh, I'm going to make education our priority. And, uh, you know, I'm not looking for a fight, but I'm willing to fight for these kids because I know it's we're fighting for the future of this state. If we don't ensure that these kids get a, a chance to make it, uh, the state won't make it. Not with the number of kids that we're talking about. So, uh, and then finally, on the north-south, yeah, I'm going to, with deep respect, correct the record <laughs> just a second. Let's look at governors and where they've come from. Pat Brown lived in Southern California. Had a house in Northern California as well, but lived in Southern California. So Pat Brown was from the L.A. area. Uh, Ronald Reagan was from L.A. area, Southern California. Um, Jerry Brown was an L.A. Community College trustee when he announced for governor, also Los Angeles. Uh, Duke Mason was from Long Beach, Southern California. Uh, Pete Wilson was from San Diego, Southern California. Gray Davis was from L.A., Southern California. And um, Arnold Schwarzenegger was from Southern California. So yes, they usually dominate when it comes to the Senate and other statewide uh, electeds, but not for governor. That's why Orange County is important to me. Because what I recognize is Southern California wants its governors here. And so, and so does the state, but it's driven by Southern California. Is that Southern California wants somebody who knows uh, these neighborhoods, who can distinguish, as I say in the San Gabriel Valley, between La Puente, El Monte, uh, Pomona, and, you know, uh, uh, La Mirada, as an example. I know not, La Mirada is not in the San Gabriel Valley. <laughs> so I want to thank you all. I really appreciate it. I'm on my way to go do, uh, I guess, uh, an interview with uh, Rick Raitt. Brief, brief, and then uh, to the Orange County Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Then I'm going to Oakland and uh, Richmond, and then to San Francisco tomorrow, and back to LA and uh, Imperial Valley on Friday. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Orange County Forum is brought to you through the generous support of the Orange County Register and our sustaining partners. For more information about the Orange County Forum, call 949 588 9884. The Orange County Forum is a nonprofit organization. Your contributions are tax deductible.